I put both hands together as I pray for the first day. Praying to God I get to see another birthday. Cause shit is crazy, man. This shit I've been through lately, man. This shit I go through daily. It can't make, but it can break me, man. This headquarters joins us live with more on the of a rapper known as Young Pappy. Tom, as you mentioned, he was a young rapper, local rapper who glorified gun violence and gang life, and now he's he was gunned down on a sidewalk in the 4800 block of North Kenmore in the uptown neighborhood early this morning. Police say he was shot twice in the back. Thomas was with a friend when a gunman walked up and started shooting. He's killed one week after posting a video online in which he makes fun of a rival gang. Post got back though, point blank period, either by the police or by them niggas. So the police go to your mother who's grieving over the of her son and they say we're glad that your son got killed. Yeah, and they say we're gonna kill your other son too. To her face. To her face. May 29th, 2015. The city of Chicago would suffer a terrible loss. It would be the day Jaquan Thomas, aka Young Pappy, was shot in cold blood. According to public records, it would be the third attempt on his life and the one that finally took the breath of an extremely talented rapper. Being a member of PBG, aka the Pooh Bear Gang, he had built up a rivalry with enemies of opposing gangs that sought to snuff Young Pappy from the world. Pooh Bear Gang was created in honor of their fallen friend, Anton Pooh Bear Sanders, who was assassinated in January 2012. The first recorded incident that almost succeeded in taking Young Pappy's life occurred on Wednesday, February 5th, 2014. According to the Chicago Tribune, police state that four teens were in the parking lot of the McDonald's at 6740 North Clark Street around 3.30 p.m when there was an argument and then gunfire. Marquis O'Carr was struck in the head and succumbed to his injuries while three other teens were wounded. Police would swarm the crime scene, painting the area with blue lights. The injured included a girl who was shot several times, a man who was shot in the lower back, and another man with a gunshot wound to the arm. That person who was injured in the arm was young Pappy, and he was said to be the intended target that led to the collateral damage of the others there. Surveillance footage would later be released showing what actually happened, debunking some of the details in the initial report, not of who was injured or shot, but how the events occurred that led to the shooting. Young Pappy and his affiliates can be seen walking along the vicinity of McDonald's. When the assailant walked behind brandished a firearm and began opening fire, sending everyone running. When the assassination attempt failed, it wouldn't be long before his rivals tried again to end young Pappy's life. This time, taking another person, just as before, our young Pappy escaped. It was July 2014 when young Pappy was with a photographer by the name of Will Lewis around the 1300 block of West Devon Avenue. Reporters state, that the alleged Vice Lord gang member by the name of Eric Vaughn and two persons drove by and spotted a rival gang member, who in this case was young Pappy. That is when Vaughn took a gun from the car's center console, handed it to them and ordered them to shoot the right. Young Pappy escaped unharmed, but Will Lewis wasn't so fortunate. He was hit in the back and succumbed to his injuries. Eric Vaughn was found guilty of manslaughter. Young Pappy seemed to have luck on his side, but his luck would run out the following year. Young Pappy was basking in the rise of his music career as a promising rapper with talent, capturing the ear of the music industry. On May 22, 2015, he released one of the most notable tracks, Shooter, alongside featured artist Lil Sean. As the title suggests, the song was riddled with terminologies of his escapades with the firearm. As it stands, the song has accumulated over 16 million views and has helped shape the drill genre of Chicago as one of the most highly regarded tracks showcasing Young Pappy's versatile flow and heavy hitting lyricism. Little did Young Pappy know, his high off the song would be short lived as one week later on, May 29, 2015, his life was targeted and taken. 1.35 AM, 
Young Pappy, along with a friend, were walking around the 4800 block of North Kenmore Avenue when a gunman walked up and started shooting. Thomas, aka Young Pappy, was hit twice in the back and rushed to Advocate Illinois' Masonic Medical Center, where sadly he succumbed to his injuries at 3.01 a.m. According to a statement from Alderman Harry Osterman from the 48th Ward, witnesses reported seeing a black car that may have been associated with the shooting. However, investigations have been unable to track down and arrest a suspect for the murder of young Pappy. Other persons in the area recall what it sounded like the moment the assailants wounded young Pappy, stating that it echoed as if about 10 gunshots rang out, but there was nothing in sight when trying to pinpoint where outside the firing came from. With officers labeling his passing as gang related, fears of retaliation sparked unrest in the community along with law enforcement. Hey Tom, as you mentioned, he was a young rapper, local rapper who glorified gun and gang life. And now he's, as you're about to hear, some people say that was inevitable, but it was the innocent bystanders who lost their lives because of the way that young Pappy lived. Given this, Osterman stated that he requested additional security in the area to curb the possibility of retaliatory actions, but soon it became evident that it didn't stop the bloodshed that would soon follow. Pappy's friends and family were split between hurt and anger, some making it their duty to get revenge for young Pappy and exacting punishment on anyone disrespecting his passing, and alleged rival gang members of young Pappy, Clifton Fry, learned that the hard way just a few days after young Pappy's passing. According to reports, Fry made derogatory comments about young Pappy after his passing when he made fun of his assassination. By June 1, 2015, he was gunned down. The suspect was apprehended and reported to be an affiliate of young Pappy, Jermel Dose. Reports state that Dose had asked his friend to drive to the Roger Park neighborhood as an apparent getaway driver on the afternoon of June 1st, where he targeted Fry. Dose's friend, who had parked near an alley, heard three to four shots and then saw Dose jump back into the car with the gun following the shooting and demanded them to drive away and asked to be dropped off near Glenwood and Pratt. Surveillance footage would capture Dose fleeing from the crime scene after the shooting also captured the license plate of the getaway car, leading officers right to him. Fry would be declared brain dead two weeks after he was shot, after which he succumbed to his injuries, all due to a comment made about young Pappy's passing. That's the level of respect he held within the community. That was only the beginning of the bloodshed in young Pappy's name. Even his rivals later confirmed that after young Pappy lost his life, his affiliates were ruthless in the streets, carrying out their revenge retaliations. You know, actually losing Pappy, like once that, once that happened, like, I ain't gonna lie, after losing Pappy, what was? We talk. Hey, hey oh, my slide no skates. I ain't gonna lie to you. Hey, 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 hey. hey that that was busting. Hey, you with me? Bro, that's when the after Pappy had, that's when like damn near the most people died from our block. Speculation began swirling around about how young Pappy was shot in his own area. A friend of an affiliate, PBG Chemo, offered his thoughts on the situation, stating that it was a setup that could have been between two groups of people. The first he speculated could be responsible for Pappy's own affiliates, stating that they were around him, but no one even attempted to return fire. Recording? Yeah. On first and great, he got back though. And the nigga that was out there, they ain't blow that pipe. And now he And he ain't down Bosworth on folks and grave. And that's what I'm gonna say. According to him, at the time, young Pappy was around people who he normally wouldn't move with but all of his trusted friends were locked up or not available to make the move with him around the time he was outside. He was, all, he was around that he don't fuck with, like, fuck, like, I was locked up. He called Duddy, Spaz was somewhere else, like, D-Mac was locked up, like, all that he really know that's gonna go for him was nowhere around. The second group of people he speculated of setting up young Pappy to meet his demise was, believe it or not, the police. Folks got back though, point blank period, either by the police, it might sound far-fetched, but strangely enough, many believe this theory because young Pappy was a known troublemaker to the police and they wanted him gone. His younger brother, Tay Sav, would relay what the cops allegedly told his mother after young Pappy's passing. And if it is to be true, 
it adds credibility to the theory that they set young Pappy up to get rid of someone who in their eyes was terrorizing the community and hurting innocent lives. According to Tay Sav, the cops told his mother that they're glad young Pappy was shot and that they'll shoot his older brother as well. So the police go to your mother who's grieving over the of her son and they said we're glad that your son got yeah and they said we're gonna kill your other son too to her face to our face tay sav also recalls the police allegedly continuously harassing them and even at one time picking him up and dropping him off in his rival's territory hoping he would be shot they took me to like where i wasn't supposed to be at the ops hood and dropped me off right there i was like damn <laughs> they told me get out but we taking you to jail. Now I wasn't finna go to jail, so I got out. The cops allegedly were tired of young Pappy endangering lives in the neighborhood. Former Roger Park Police Commander Thomas Waldera called the music of young Pappy technological kerosene, fueling the gang war raging on in the streets. Their encounters have been many with young Pappy's charges ranging from criminal trespassing, reckless conduct, theft, marijuana possession, and felony weapons possession. But the most serious of all was having five hour standoffs with SWAT at his residence in the 6300 block of North Lakewood Avenue in the Edgewater neighborhood, where over 25 persons were charged. Anthony and Michelle, it was a tense five hour standoff, but it has come to a peaceful resolution. This was kind of a strange situation. More than 25 people who were barricaded with a gunman are now in custody being questioned. Taking a look at his mugshots, tell a tale of someone with so much potential, but lost his way leading up to the end of his life. Whether it was due to his rivals, his own affiliates, or as some speculate, the police. While many see him as a troubled youth that was living a dangerous lifestyle, his mother paints a different narrative, stating that he just took on the gang persona to boost his rap career, but he was a good person. His younger brother, Tay Sav, and older brother, Boo Double, however, Recall young Pappy lived the lifestyle he betrayed, so while it hurts losing him, they weren't surprised as that's what comes with the way he lived. They were close and came up in the same environment that took young Pappy's life. His older brother, Boo Double, would experience a phase of depression after young Pappy was assassinated, resulting in him becoming careless and almost losing his life after being shot nine times. Young Pappy was right there, the success within his hands, it was just to remove himself from the gang environment and focus on his music. Word is that he was on the verge of signing a record deal with label powerhouse Atlantic. To my understanding, from what I heard from his manager or whatever, he was supposed to be reaching a deal with Atlantic Records. Really? You know what I'm saying? Around the same time he got Sadly, his talent never got to blossom to the heights it was certainly going to reach. He leaves behind a catalog that to this day still boasts 224,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Another life lost that attributed to the history that continues to teach persons to hate and hurt each other rather than build, grow, and uplift each other. Rest in peace, young Pappy.